you will be looking at money to try for okay. another trade okay. and then finish to the whole Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what day, what day I'm in. Is it Saturday? I think that's it. Exactly. I'll go for a cup of tea. Okay. I'll go for a cup of tea. Um, so what we're doing is just passing uh, the names along. I just wanted to get everyone's name. Uh, that way we're more of like a family, so I can talk like I'm talking to my family. Uh, my name is Jamal Miles, and today I'm going to be presenting on job interview techniques and communication skills. So it's going to be very, very simple, straightforward tips, techniques, and methods that I've used throughout my career to go to many interviews from when I was maybe 14 or 15 all the way to now. Okay, is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I also wanted to, before I start speaking, I wanted to let you know that I really appreciate everybody making it here. It's very snowy, very cold outside. We all could be at home or at with their loved ones, but we're here to have fun. Okay, does everybody want to have fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Does everybody want to have fun? Yes. Yes. Good, because we're going to have fun. I'm a very easygoing person. I like to have fun. If you have any questions or concerns, or you want me to repeat something, just put your hand up and just let me know. Um, and uh, somebody else may have the same question, so ask as many as you'd like. That's why I'm here. We're all here to learn. And I'm learning just by standing and talking to you as well, okay? So, with that being said, I'd like to just quickly go over some rules, okay? They always say that rules were meant to be broken. Yes, okay. <laughs> they weren't meant to be broken, they are meant to be followed. Okay? Every presentation I do that, I say rules were meant to be, there is broken, right? And it's very, very simple, okay? So, the number one rule, okay? Yes, you have to have fun. If you're not having fun, you're not going to learn anything, right? So I want to make sure this is exciting. I'm very uh, different from a lot of the presentations you've been to. And I'm going to make sure that when you leave, you have as much information as you need. You have as much uh, experience here with, you, with your peers and with each other. And you also have fun. You say, well, you know what? Back three hours went by like that, and I had a lot of fun. OK? Does everybody agree on having fun? Say yes. I. Yes. I. Everybody say I. 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 OK. Excellent. Number two. Everybody read that? Participate. participate. So if you're not having fun, you're not going to participate. If you're not participating, you're not having fun. So participation just simply means asking a question. And if I have an activity or an exercise, whether it's partner exercise or a group exercise or individual <laughs> exercise, that we all participate and we give our best. That's why we're here. We want to give 100% and I'm going to give 1,000% to you. Chances are, when I'm done, I'm going to bed, because that's how exhausted I'm going to be. But I'm going to make sure that everybody has as much information as possible, okay? Is that okay with everybody? Yes. yes. Okay, excellent. So number three, my favorite. Energy. I'm very energetic. I like to have fun. I like to speak loud. My wife, this is my wife, everybody, Nadia. Say hi. Hi, hi. hi Nadia. Yes. Hi, she hi, can hi. attest that I'm very energetic, I'm very loud, and I sometimes snore, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. But when you have energy, other people can feel it, yes? Mm -hmm. So if I was to sit beside Jose, Yeah, I'm so excited. I just won the lottery. 
how do you think he's going to feel? Sad. Sad. Or even this one. Here's another scenario. Let's say we're on the bus or the subway or even in the car. Oh, Jose, you're not going to drink that coffee. I drank it and it made me feel bad. You know what makes me feel bad? When it snows. You know what it makes me feel bad? When it's sunny. You know what it makes me feel bad? When you're eating like that. Stop, Jose. Why are you doing that? Why aren't you saying anything? And yeah, I know. But what about this? So it's, it's energy, right? And he can feel that, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly, right? So if I was to come into this presentation... Good attitude. Huh? Attitude. Yeah, yeah, attitude. And there you go. That's important in life. Attitude. So if I come here with a very bad attitude, everybody here is going to be bored, and they're going to say, well, Jamal guy is going to be horrible, right? Or if I come with a good attitude, everybody can feel that. You can feel the energy, right? I take martial arts, and one of the things they teach us is you have to be energetic. Because most people think when you take martial arts, you want to fight everybody. But it's not even about the fighting. It's more about energy. We're all the same. We have different races, culture, religion, background, height. Everybody is the same. If I'm hungry, you have food, can we eat? If you're vice versa, if I cut, I bleed, right? So it's more about being able to relate to others, be positive, and have a good attitude. Okay? Mm -hmm. Every day above ground is a good day. Okay? So that's why I'm here, to make sure that we have good energy, and I keep the energy up. If anybody's yawning, I have a rule. Two yawns in a row, everybody gets up, and sometimes I make people start dancing. Or we'll stretch, or we'll do something different to make sure that the energy is up. Okay? Does everybody agree that we don't want to be bored today? Yes. 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 Okay. Excellent. I think I'll use a different color. Number four, the very last one. Okay? This color is a little too pink. <laughs> the very last one. Guidance. Okay. Come in, sir. Yeah. No problem. Uh, if you'd like to sit there. Good. Okay. How are you? Good. Good. Guidance. Okay. Just like Jose said. So there's Jose and Jose. Yes. So which one is the first Jose? Jose, my the first is second Jose Jaime. Oh. In Spanish. Jaime. Thank you. Okay. You can call him JJ. Yeah, Jota Jota. Jota Jota. JJ. JJ. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to call you JJ from now on. <laughs> Jose and JJ. As, as JJ said, attitude, right? Yes. So you have to be willing to know that you don't know anything. Nobody knows everything, right? So the first thing is you have to accept some guidance. You may not like everything I say, but one thing you may like, use that, okay? And part of guidance is taking what works for you and using it, taking action, okay? You may have different experiences than I do, or, or yourself, or yourself, or yourself, right? So we can all learn from each other. If you're open, you have a good attitude to accepting guidance, you're in the right place. If you came here to be right, you're in the wrong place. Okay? Because in life, there's people who, oh, I, I know everything, and uh, I'm not one of those people. I can learn from a baby to my elder, right? So if you're willing to accept some guidance, you came to the right place. Does everybody agree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're all together. So these are the rules. Does anybody have any questions about the rules? No? Okay, one tip, maybe right. you chop, to, to chop, the more important in any meeting, mm -hmm. you have to do. Only the, the boss. Yeah, yeah. Good people, no anymore. <laughs> it's simple. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the important is energy, the energy, the your attitude. Yes. Positive, yeah. good energy. Yeah. It's more important in any, any meeting or any Anything. Instead, you anything, anything, anything. I've, I've hired people who, just because of this, 
because of this and because they had fun. They may have had less experience than somebody else who had pages. But I'd say, you know what? I would rather work with JJ than work with this person. So this person is going to get hired. Sometimes that's how it works. Because you can always learn to do the job or the task or the role, but you can't learn to have a personality. You can't learn to have a good attitude. It just, it's in you, right? It's like riding a bike. Once you learn, you never forget. So that's very, very important. So we're gonna continue, okay? So, my very first question is, can everyone see this okay? Yeah. Yeah. By show of hands, how many of you are looking to increase your job interviewing skills by show of hands. Okay? I'm always looking for improvement. How many of you want to do really well on your next job interview? Okay, good. I'll rephrase that. How many of you are looking to increase your overall communication skills? Okay, excellent. So we're all in the right place. So as I mentioned before, the name of the presentation is Job Interviewing 101. The most important need to know, need to know, okay? Not, oh, it's, it's okay, maybe, here's a little fluff, two fairy dust. There need to know tips for your next job interview. But it's more so just in life, okay? So we went through the rules. <laughs> now we're going to go through the most important thing. What's in it for you? Why are you here, okay? This is what we're going to learn. One, how to prepare for an interview, okay? Interview preparation, very, very important. Number two, the three types of job applicants. So in any company and anywhere in the world, there's usually three types of things that they look for when you apply, okay? It could be a combination of the three, it could be just one or two, but these are the three types of job applicants. The different job interviewing methods. So when I first started learning about you know job interviewing, I only thought that there was you just go to a company, you'd sit down and they'd interview you. Now there's various different types before and after. Okay? So we're gonna go through that as well. The five essential points to get across in your interview. These are the five most important things that when you go to interview, you want to let them know right away, okay? Everything else is just conversation, okay? The top five tips every professional should know in any industry, okay? These are all based on my experience. So I'm giving you information from the people who hire people and also from going to interviews. Because I've done myself, I've been to hundreds, of, maybe if not thousands of interviews myself, and I've given thousands of interviews on the other side of the table going to different applicants. So I created this presentation to show you this is what industry looks for in a candidate, okay? So these are the top five tips that you should know. The STAR method. So the STAR method is an acronym, so it's a four-step process when you're doing an interview. This is what they're looking for. And don't get too overwhelmed, okay? It's a lot of information. I'm going to go slowly, and I want to let you know that I'm going to be giving you this presentation. So if you say, oh, what did he say? I can't remember what he said. What was the name of that? I'll email it to everybody so they'll have it so you can go through it again at your own time, okay? Is that okay with everyone? Okay, yeah. excellent. The 4P formula. So there's a formula. It's the 4Ps. We're going to go through that as well. And one of my favorites, the top 10 do you have any questions for us? <laughs> questions. They always ask at the end of the interview, or maybe in between, they say, do you have any questions? When I first started doing interviews, I would say, no, that's it. And then I would say, no. And then some people look at you like, no. Right? But they want you to ask them questions, and they want you to ask them specific questions. And these are the top ten. So this, if out of everything I tell you, this is the meat of the presentation, okay? So, why am I doing this? Before, I would go to presentations, and not to say anything bad about anyone else's presentation, but I find I'm sitting there, the person will come, 
start talking. I went to this school. I have this degrees. I work here. Um, I have X amount of kids. And now let's just get into the PowerPoint. Okay, go. Da, 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 da. But you don't really know why the person's there. Okay, why? Wh what do they go through? What's their story? My story, very simple. I was born here. Um, I have four sisters. Four. I'm the only boy. The youngest, maybe. And I come from a family of very hard workers. My mom came here with $300 Canadian from an island called Dominica. The com not the Dominican Republic, but Dominica. Which Dominica is Island. Island, yeah, the Commonwealth of Dominica. Uh -huh. She came here with a suitcase, $300, and didn't know anybody. And worked very, very hard to get us to school and everything else. My dad is from Jamaica. Now my dad, if you see my dad walk through the door, you know it's my dad, because he look, I look just like him, and my dad talks to everybody. So when I was younger, we'd go to the supermarket, hey, hey, we'd be at the Blue Jay, hey, in the mall, hey, anywhere, somebody knows my dad. So growing up, I would see, like, isn't he nervous? Doesn't he get scared? <laughs> Doesn't he not like to talk to strangers? And my dad raised me to say, talk to everybody. Don't be afraid to talk to strangers. Why? Because when you get older, everybody's a stranger. When you go to an interview, you don't know them. If you go to a networking event, you don't know them. If you come to a class like this, you don't know. Maria, I don't know you, right? But you may have something that I need and vice versa. So if I don't talk to you, how am I supposed to get or help you, right? So these are the things that I grew up doing. And I said, hey, you know what? I like to talk to people. I enjoy doing presentations. I enjoy working. I don't mind working hard. And I said, hey, you know what? Maybe I should do presentations as a job. And then I went to school, and I figured out it was sales. So in sales, you do many presentations. All you do is presentations. And it's not about trying to sell this person, hey, you know what? Buy this marker. It's more so. How can I help you? What are some of the things you do in a day? What are some of the things that you enjoy doing? Do you need help with any of that? Then you say yes, and then you, then you build a relationship. It's not just, hey, how's it going by this? Hey, how's it going, right? So out of that, I said, you know what? If I enjoy this, there has to be other people who either don't enjoy it and I can help them, or who do enjoy it and we can work together. And since then, I've done many presentations. I've started my business. Uh, I've gotten married. I have a five-year-old daughter, and I spend my days helping everyone. Um, I find that it's, if you enjoy what you're doing, it's not really work. You're just living life, right? And I hadn't had it easy either, but I have a good attitude, as JJ would say. Okay? And this is why I'm here to help you. Everything that is on here, you'll have access to. I'll email to you. If you have any other questions or concerns, please... Ask my wonderful friend here. She knows. Carolina. Yes, my wonderful friend here. And um, if you have any questions during here, like if you need to get in contact with me, she has my info. You'll also have it on break. Ask me any question you want. I'm here to help, okay? So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay? So now, can we all please stand up? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to relax. Re yeah, we're going to stretch it out. We're going to relax. Everybody do this for a <laughs> All the body. Put your shoulders up like this. No, no, neck, no, neck, no, neck. Like this. Take a deep breath and relax. Okay, one more. And look. Okay, so now if you can come in somewhere, my friend. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna stand up with your hands like this, hands in the air, and we're gonna go like this. And now you wanna move a little closer, Maria, and we'll move over. Move closer to um y Yamil. Is that your name? Yeah. Yamil. Yes. Okay. So move closer. Everyone's
And the story is why? Because it gets you to feel something. Okay? When I speak to you about a difficult time I had, let's say for example, this PowerPoint presentation is taking me about 35 hours to create in total. It looks very simple, but I do everything by design. When I was done, my computer crashed and I lost everything. And I didn't save it. That's 35 hours. And I was going to bed very late and I had to wake up very early. So you can imagine how I feel. Right? I was very, very hurt and very upset. Do you feel that when I explain it to you? You can feel that, right? That is a speak about a time. What I just did there is I gave you the particular details of a story and a situation that happened to me and I told you the end result. So now if you're interviewing me or I'm interviewing you, I can feel that. And this person goes, oh wow, yeah, so this person is a hard worker. This person is dedicated. So what I did was, I just after I finished yelling and screaming, I just went back and I did it again. And it you know, actually came out even better than the first time. So you got the beginning of the story, the conflict, and the ending. Just like a movie, just like a book, just like a TV show, just like a basketball, a sports game, baseball, soccer, has a beginning, middle, end. And that's what they want to ask. Tell me about a time when you had to use, one, good judgment. Two, you took initiative. Jamal didn't have to tell you to write it down, you just wrote it down. Or I didn't have to tell you to ask a question, you just asked. Or they didn't have to tell you, you know what, can you please clean the classroom after everybody leaves? You just did it, right? Initiative. Three, you were responsible. You are responsible for yourself. It could be your family members. It could be your coworkers. It could be for your team at work. It could be the office. It could be your household. Everybody can relate. You want to be able to relate, right? And tell them a story. And lastly, communication skills. My favorite. Communication, and I like everybody to write this down, this is very important. 55% of communication is nonverbal. It's all body language. It's all in your attitude. So I have some people, even in my own family, who say, you know, I can't speak like you. I'm nervous. I stutter. I'm from, you know, I've had friends from all over the world. Jamal, you know, what you're saying is great, but I have an accent. You know, I'm from India, or I'm from Colombia, or I'm from Jamaica, or I'm from Africa, or wherever, right? But the key is, it's not what you're saying, it's how you say it. Remember that example I showed you with Jose? I said the same thing. I can say, Jose, I'm so happy I won the lottery. Can you tell me smiling from here to here? Yeah, we're going on vacation. Are you ready? <laughs> or I can say, Jose, I won the lottery. I'm smiling from here to here. Yeah! Are you ready? We're going on, we're going on a cruise. And you're saying the same thing, but you're saying it in different ways, right? So it's all in how you say it. Now, the other 35% is tone. <clears throat> so the tone that you use. Sometimes I like to just raise my voice just for no reason, just because in our language, it goes like up and down and up and down. And I remember when JJ was talking to you, whatever story you were saying, he had tone. It wasn't monotone. It wasn't like, oh, uh, it was going up and down, right? So when you tell a story, it has ups and downs, modulation. They call that tone. Very important when you speak, okay? The last one is actually words. So it's very interesting. People think communication is just, yeah, you can get a folder right there. Yeah. Communicate, they think it's actually speaking. That's the last thing, right? Still, speaking is still important, but how you carry yourself says way more than words. They say actions speak louder than words, right? So this is speak about a time. Good judgment. Talk about when you have good judgment. Talk about when you have initiative. Talk about when you have responsibility. And then we can talk about <laughs> communication skills or even how you overcome communication skills. I'm going to go into strengths and weaknesses as well and show you how to actually use your strengths and use your weaknesses, but spin it in a way where your weakness is still a strength. Okay? Make a list. Prepare, right? So you want to write down any training courses you've ever done. This counts as one as well. Okay? 
How are you? Good. Good. You okay? You made yeah. it. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. It's snowing outside. It's still snowing, yeah, right? Snowing, yeah. It's not sunny. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, if you want, you can just write your name here. Okay? Okay. There's a marker here. So any training courses you've taken in your lifetime, write those down. Any achievements, whether it's personal or professional, it's still an achievement, okay? And lastly, certifications. So if you have um, a degree in finance, if you have taken a course in college, if you've done uh, a government-funded program and you've received the certification, anything that you can think of, I want you to write this down before it will make so when they ask you, you review it, it's fresh in your mind, and you just tell them a story about it. Okay? Does everybody understand that so far? Okay. Experiences at work also count. Okay? Experiences at work are actually why <laughs> they want to hire you, right? See how you handle things. School and if you have volunteer activities. So once again, most people that I talk to before they go to an interview, they're very nervous because they don't write everything down. They keep it in their head. So what am I going to say? If you're thinking about different things. Put it on paper, calm down, review it the night before, and when you go in there, it's fresh in your mind and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay? Clarify your strengths and weaknesses. So we're going to do an activity where you actually have to write it down. You write down your strengths and you write down what your weaknesses are. When I say weaknesses, I, I don't really like that word, but I find a lot of people understand it. As in, I usually put opportunities, okay? For every problem, there's two opportunities and one solution. So there's no, there's no such thing as a problem. It's just how you look at it, okay? Strengths talk about if you like to talk to people, if people tell you you talk too much, right, then because you like to talk, you like to talk to people. So then put yourself in a position where you're talking to people and getting paid for it, right? It's still, it's still an opportunity. Strengths can be your confidence, you're reliable, you're flexible, you're well-traveled, you're a hard worker, you're disciplined, you don't mind learning new things, you have a good attitude, you're a people person. If you like to deal with uh, people who are kind of hard to deal with, a lot of people one of the jobs I had, I was strictly hired to deal with people who were mean. They would call, yelling and screaming. One time I answered the phone, and this is how the person answered the phone. I said, hello, X and Y company, Jamal speaking. Ah! Ah, ah, ah! My computer's not working, oh my god! That's how, they, that's how the person was yelling at me. And they went from yelling and screaming and swearing at me, to eventually crying and apologizing, to, oh my God, I love you, and they gave me a testimonial. And they're still a customer to this day. Where most people would say, I'm not talking to them, they don't pay me enough. What they began doing was, hey Jamal, come here. And I would grab the phone, talk to them, fine. The key to that is, when somebody's yelling at you, you have to remain calm. Nobody can yell at somebody who's calm. If I yell back, then it goes up and up and up. If you're yelling at me and I'm like this, yes, yeah, yeah, I can see that, I understand. Eventually they're like, why isn't he yelling back? And they just stop. You give them what they want, and they love you. So, we're still friends to this day. It's not going to work out like that every single time, because some people just want to yell. However, you have to listen to what they're saying in between the lines, right? So like, sometimes you're just yelling like babies. Babies can't talk, they can just cry. So you have to say, are you hungry? Do you need to change your diaper? Do you need to get up from there? Whatever. That's that's how I was looking at it, right? Millionaire babies. So, weaknesses. One of the weaknesses I have is I'm a perfectionist. It has to be absolutely perfect, right? And I've learned that when you think like that, you take too long. If you're working in a group, right? And I'm the last person going, oh my god, I gotta fix this, it's not ready yet. Everybody else in the group is going crazy, right? Because they're just handed in. Or we have to get this done. I want to go home now. It's five. I'm not staying till ten. However, it's still a good thing because you want to make sure that you pay attention to detail. However, you can't be a perfectionist. Nobody's perfect. 
but you can be what they call a progressionist. One day at a time, you're getting better, right? Slowly but surely, as long as you're going forward, okay? And that changed my whole concept. So I just tell them, sometimes I may feel more perfectionist, but now I look at it more so as a good thing. I just say, nobody's perfect, I do my best, tomorrow's another day. Okay, so that's a weakness. Another one is, um, I, I don't really think I work well in teams. That could be a weakness. However, what I've learned is, in a company, everybody has to work together for the greater good of the company. So you see how I'm spinning that? I named the weakness, and then I said, what I've learned is, right, as opposed to, I'm lazy. That's it, right? So you always want to give them what you think could be a weakness and then put a positive spin on it. Once again, I have more notes on that that you'll be getting after this presentation that you could use, okay? Is everybody okay on this so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not very clear about the weakness part. Okay. See, the one that you mentioned, Yeah. it's actually, you know, you would like to project as a positive in that you are a professionalist, you are a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. so, you know, once uh, in my class in York University, we had a discussion and I used something like that and my professor immediately stopped. He said, bullshit, are you trying to show off? Oh, so he, he said that, if you, if I'm understanding if I, you correctly, yes. um, he said that when you said you were a perfectionist, he thought that you were trying to show off, meaning that, I mean, meaning that. that is not the right example of weakness that you can use. By You're saying perfection. To, I, yes, yes. I disagree yeah. with them. Yes. I think it was more so with your professor. No, he was saying that, you know, there are so many other things that you can think of. Mm. Don't try to use a, pos you know, something that is considered as positive yeah. or say that that is your weakness. Yeah, so, like, I'm so I'm handsome, I don't even know. I'm s people like, I don't know why, but I'm just so handsome and people get mad at me, so that's definitely a weakness. It's like, something like that. Yes, exactly. I wanted you to add add to that, so go ahead. You had a point. Oh, I, I totally disagree with him mm -hmm. because, um, um, I was yes. a perfectionist. Yes. <laughs> I've learned the hard way. Yes. And trying to do everything perfect can be very time consuming mm -hmm. and that's dollars for the company. Mm -hmm. So I learned the hard way. Yeah. There's now I try my best yeah. and I still spend that little time but then at the end, you know, there's yeah, another day. Exactly. And nobody is wrong. Like you mm -hmm. you're he can have his opinion, that's fine. She's lived it and said, hey, I can't do that, and moved on, right? But perfection is something that we as humans think that we have to, like it's a destination, like success. Like I'm here, island of success. Yeah. It's a, success is daily. It's something you work towards, a journey, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why when you say perfection, it could be used as that same example, right? Um, I used to think I was a perfectionist. You know what? Now I've learned that it, it, you know, um, it takes too long. So other people were depending on me, and in my perfection, the company is actually going through a lot of money and waiting for me to finish this. Right? So you can go either way. But I think in your particular example, he's probably heard that so many times as a univers university professor that he's just like, that's bullshit. Right? Uh, so is that is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. Did you have a question? No, just um, mm -hmm. in relation to the being a professionist, mm -hmm. um, nothing is perfect, mm -hmm. no matter what you do, no yeah. matter the hours, the days, the years that exactly. you spend. Yeah. And what happens is when you're a professionist, you want the people around you to do the same oh, or, to, more or to do what you want, yeah. it's perfect. Exactly. And yeah. that's where frustration comes in because Tell nobody's going to do that thing. Mm -hmm. You end up doing the same job two, three times over <coughs> because it wasn't done yep. to your expectation. So exactly. being a professional, it can be really not, not good in if at work or home or friends whenever, you know? Yep. So it's really <coughs> That's a, thank you. That's an excellent point because um, there's different types of people you work with, different managers, and I had some managers who were perfectionists, and it's the worst. Because you are so excited to do a job, they, you show them the job, and they're like, oh, I don't really like that. And you do it again, oh, I don't really like that. Do it again, oh, and they're like, okay. So then you give it to that manager, it, it never gets done. Because in their head, they don't even know what they want. So how could you know what you want? 
right? How, if I don't know what I want and I'm your manager and I'm giving you a task and then you bring it to me and I'm like, I'm not good enough, how are you ever going to know, right? So it brings down the morale of not only yourself and the confidence of others around you, but it slow, just slows everything down, okay? Sometimes you just have to make decisions. You just have to make the decisions for them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I mean. Yeah. Did you want to say something? How do you change something like that if you're like that? <laughs> Oh, if you're, if you're the... If you're a perfectionist, how do you change that? That's a great question. <laughs> um, like I said, you have to look at it as perfection is something that uh, it's in... I want to use the word impossible, but nothing is perfect. Right? So, it can be 99.9%, .9%, but it's never going to be 100, right? So, you have to look at it. Is it better than it was yesterday? And then just keep obtaining that... Tomorrow's going to be better than yesterday, the day after, the day after, the day after, and that's how you progress. But if you think that way, it's, if there's two people, one person's a perfectionist, right? So let's say you're a perfectionist, and you're a progressionist, and you get this, the same task, he'll be done before you. Because you're still looking at this and that, and he's just like, okay, good enough. Is this good enough? And the person goes, yeah, job's done, right? As opposed to... You're thinking, it has to be perfect, right? So, it slows you down, right? I just look at it, I just look at it more so as, as a, you want to say something? Yeah, I just look at it more so as um, something you have to work on, really. And just recognize that as long as it's better than the day before, it's going to be better off. It's not easy, though. Yeah. There's a lot of questions. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was thinking that um, being a perfectionist, perfectionist is not really being a perfect one. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to do or do a better job that, than somebody else. Let's say an example: if you get to, if you have to organize a room, mm -hmm. and by being a perfectionist, well, if you could consider yourself a perfectionist, would probably um, they put the things in the right place. Mm -hmm. But if somebody that's not perfectionist, it, it, go and just push the things to the corner and that's it, job's done. But then, that, I don't think that's a good job, and at the same time, it's, it's efficiency and and uh, good for a good job. Because if the guy or whoever wants to organize the room just push the things to the corner as long as they clear the room, mm -hmm. but it's not really the, uh, everything in its place, mm -hmm. I, don't think it's, I don't think the job's done. Does anybody, does anybody understand what you're saying? <laughs> Yeah. Does anybody have anything to add to what he's saying? I can say something. Cause I know that um, I know where trying to be perfect came to me, and it's by trauma. <laughs> My mother said me to be perfect because that was the way she was. She was very strict, and it's like you do it good, perfect, or it's not done. Mm -hmm. And then she'll make us do it again and again and, and again right until she and thought it was perfect. Mm. So to us, we had to do things perfect because that was the way that we were taught. So the slightest thing was not perfect. Mm. I think that is a, uh, in my experience and my own uh, experience, I was per uh, perfectionist before. Mm. I want to be everything that the needs and uh, but is the perfect thing is it is the thing that you want to do a your way mm. no other mm -hmm. way yeah. and that is no perfectionist mm. uh, means because uh, other other work will be perfect too mm. but it's not in the way that you want to see and the, you want to do it mm -hmm. and one one of the the mistakes that we um, have when you are a perfectionist is that believe that the other person mm -hmm. knows what do you want. Yeah. And that is not right. Nobody can read minds. No. Yeah. At least you said. If you explain how you want the work and mm -hmm. you explain how you want you want to you know to put everything in the pot, mm -hmm. probably we will have the perfect work. Mm -hmm. But if we need to know that when we are working in that way or we think that I am perfectionist or so, mm. it is the way that I want to see, but mm. I need to explain.
clean first. Yeah. What's the thing I want to do? And you need yeah. the words for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's words. <laughs> I just want to add to what yeah. he said. Um, what he said is not being a professional. Mm. Like if I have to clean this room, yeah. I have to do the proper job. So Standard, that yeah. is not being a professional. It's mm. just doing the job properly. Mm. If I come and just push the things away, yeah. I'm being sloppy. Yeah. So, you know, it's being a professional is really trying to do everything to the tra to the point yeah. that, and I'm going to give maybe as a little stupid another example. Um, the way I fold the bag. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like to fold them yeah. in a little bowl, yeah. so and I put them away. Yeah. My aunt, she likes to fold, it. fold them yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Everybody do their yeah. job. But what happens is, if I fold it like that, she says, no, 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 no. That's not the way to do it. Yeah. This is how you do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, but I do it. This. No, no, no. And she will redo it and redo it and you, because that's the way it has to be. Yeah. And that's being a profession. Yes. You see, yeah. because she wants that fold perfectly without the crease, without yeah, yeah. nothing. So that's being a profession. Yeah. And you expect for everybody to do it that way. That way Otherwise, yeah. it's not okay. Yes. Uh, to what she said about doing the job right, mm -hmm. I have taught my kids. Mm -hmm. I I grew up being spoiled rotten. Mm -hmm. I mean, spoiled rotten, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do nothing because I was raised by a great aunt and she would not let me do anything. Mm -hmm. So if I want no, 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 I'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was wrong yeah. because I grew up expecting for things to be done for me. Yeah. And when I didn't have that, I went through hell. So I said to myself, that my kids are not going to have a life like that. Yeah. Yes, I spoiled them. I mean, we always spoiled our kids mm -hmm. to a point. And I always told them, if you're going to do the job, mm -hmm. Either do it right or don't do it. Mm. But do the best that you can. Yes. Don't do it and don't expect you to the perfect, but do the best that you can. Yeah. See, because it has to be like that. Yeah. Otherwise they go and do it and be like, Okay, it's done, mom. Uh -uh. So sloppy. You know? Yeah. But just do the best that you can and as long as you do the best, it's okay. But if you gonna just throw it there, then don't do it. No, it's not good enough. So you know it's um depends on perfection. Everybody, yes, and, and to, to add to what everyone had said, everybody has a different idea of what perfection is, but what I'm guessing is that it takes a lot longer when you're perfect, mm -hmm. right? Does everybody agree? Yeah. Yeah? So I want everybody to do, please stand up. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Very simple. We're going to close our eyes, take a deep breath. One more. On the count of three, I want everybody to say perfection. <laughs> perfection. One, two, three. Perfection. perfection. I can tell, you know, everyone can have a seat, that perfection for everybody is a very touchy side. <laughs> Yes, yes. So 
what she's saying is, if you go for a job to be an accountant and they say, if you're detail-oriented, and you say, well, I'm not a detail-oriented person, the person is going to then I'm not going to hire you because it says that. That's a great question. What they may do, this is different scenarios, you can do two things. One is you tell them that you give them an example of how you're a detail-oriented person based on your experience, things that you've done. Or two, you could say, if they say, what are your strengths and weaknesses, you could say, well, I find that I have not been a detail-oriented person in the past. However, what I found that worked for me was I go through what is required of me and I'll ask the manager or the superior or the coworker, is this what you want me to do? To clarify. Then they'll say, yes. Fine, that works. Anybody will understand that. Now, that's, that's really what detail is. Get the details, verify that's what you want. Once it's done, you go and you do it, right? Then they check out list. Exactly, exactly. Like, make a check, like, like we did the, earlier when we did the you summary of the prepare for interview. Yeah. So you can tell them that. Um, I, you know, I wasn't a detail oriented person before, but now I like to uh, do a checkup list where I write down all the tasks I have to do. I verify it with the person who gave me the work, and then I get it done. And I find that's worked for me going forward. So it shows that you've improved. With any weakness, you just want to show them that this is where I was, this is what I've done, and this is where I am now. And I'm sure that also the employee, employee would tell her, yeah. uh, uh, that's all right, but make sure that this one is done, this one is done, and this one yeah. has got to be done. Absolutely, and absolutely. Take the, and then the rest, I guess. And the rest, the rest you could do. And I mean, it, nobody, nobody hurts if you ask, uh, they'll hurt you if you ask questions. If you ask the same question, though, then they get upset, right? So, that's it. Did that answer your question? Okay. So, I'm just going to move on. How is everyone feeling right now? Does anybody have to go to the bathroom? Are we together? Yeah, we're still together, yeah. I'll just go. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so the three types of job applicants. Could, could I mention one more thing? Yes. Like, uh, in the case of somebody calling himself a perfectionist, mm -hmm. can, you, can you say I'm a perfectionist? Or oh, I tend to be a perfectionist, but I do also understand that everybody is different and that not everybody works to my uh, level or to my... Like to your liking? To my liking, yeah, I yes. understand that. I understand that everybody. Absolutely, that. absolutely, yes. So that could probably make it positive from negative, positive. As long as long as you have a bridge between mm -hmm. your weakness yeah. and what you've done to improve, or what lesson did you learn, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like I learned that that everybody were, everybody's mind different, or everybody works that. You know, have a different attitude. Towards. Exactly. And we all want to do get the, the job done at the end of the day. Yeah. We just have different ways of doing it, right? So you have to find that common ground, okay? And that comes, I guess, with, uh, with maturity and with age, I guess? Yeah, wisdom, exactly, yeah. exactly. So the three types of job applicants, okay? One, they look for general traits. Very general, just like we were speaking about before. One, do you have the capacity to learn? If you don't know, are you willing to research or ask questions or try something that you've never done before? Okay, that's the capacity to learn. Are you open-minded and are you willing to learn? Two, process information. Just like we mentioned before, if you have a job to do or a particular responsibility, how do you process it? Do you make a checklist? Do you make a summary list? Do you make a task list? Do you do the harder stuff first and then do the easier stuff after, or vice versa? How do you process the information? So they'll ask you, if I have 10 things to do and I give you one hour to do it, how are you going to get it done? They want to see how you think. How do you work? What's your working stuff? Okay? And most importantly, the likability factor. Do I like you? Sadly enough, when you go to an interview, some interviews are just to see